Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. We are honored and so happy to have back with us national security expert, Claire Lopez. Claire is the founder of Lopez Liberty LLC. She's got a background in American Foreign Service. She's a national security expert. She's a former CIA big shot and we're thrilled to have her back. Hello, Claire. Hey, Barry, thank you very much. I'm glad to be back with you anytime. Um, I wanna tell our audience that I am astounded by the theories and evidence to back your theory that you have sent to me. And I consider the show we are about to do, and we're gonna do a follow-up after, um, one of the most important things you and I have ever discussed, and maybe out of the thousand plus shows ATP has done, this is in the top one or 2%. You have come up with an understanding of what's happening in America that was predicted a generation ago by some really, really bad people and everything that was written and predicted has come true. Tell us, in brief, what the heck I'm so upset about. Well, Barry, what we're talking about um, it was written in a book called The Naked Communist. The Naked Communist is a book that was written in 1958 by a former uh, FBI agent named W. Cleon Skousen. And from his, at that point in time, decades of experience uh, with the FBI, and up against communism, and as well, um, his, his understanding of uh, the testimony that I think he'd either heard or read about, took notes about in the congressional hearings of earlier in the 1950s by communist uh, and former communists who came to testify witnesses in front of the House on Un-American Activities Committee and also in the Senate, Senator Joseph McCarthy's committee. And he put together the book because he wanted to sort of consolidate in one place for Americans to have easy access to read and understand what he had come to understand about the communist threat that was infiltrating US government and every sector of American society. Let's talk about a couple of those predictions. Uh, we've taken a few out today for the education of our audience. Um, these come from chapter 13, the 45 goals of com communism today. And I'm gonna pull out a couple of them and ask you to explain. Number seven of the 45 goals is grant recognition of communist China and get communist China into the United Nations. Why was this so important? And has the goal been achieved in the way they predicted it would be in the 1950s? Yeah, I think this was very important. The legitimization of this communist regime, of course, Mao Zedong conquered Beijing, conquered China uh, in 1949, established the Communist Party of China. Well, at least uh, in 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 uh, you know as dictator, as ruler. Um, but that was just the beginning, getting the, the, the red Chinese, the Communist Party of China into the United Nations because We'll recall too that after that, some actually decades after that, uh, in 1972, President Richard Nixon, his Secretary of State Henry Kissinger then made the opening to China uh, and eventually normalized relations with it. Uh, and eventually uh, China was welcomed into the World Trade Organization, a hugely important move that provided all kinds of economic benefits to them uh, which the Communist Party of China took full advantage of, as we can see to this day. Well, let's let's add to that that they are not like us, either culturally or more importantly, politically. They don't have elections. They don't have freedoms. Everything is dictated from the top down in a traditional communist dictatorship. And their goal is world domination. And we facilitated that in 1972. And now every day, Biden is now echoing Trump by saying, whoa, these guys are out to get us and they are getting us. Wouldn't you agree? 
Absolutely, I would agree. Um, the thing is that the Chinese leadership has always told us that they want to dominate the entire world and replace the United States as uh, the, the world power. Um, nothing has been you know, hidden from us, but the naive assumption was that if the Chinese could be brought into world organizations like the UN, the, the WTO, um, and with economic uh, success and better material uh, advancement for the people, that somehow the regime, the communist regime itself, would also modify uh, and liberalize and become more uh, democratic. And, and of course, that's fallacy. It's, it, 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 it hasn't come true. It's never going to come true. Uh, the Communist Chinese Party exists to dominate and, and to subjugate uh, not just their own people, but the rest of the world. Well said. They're winning, we're losing, and we ain't doing nothing about it yet. Let's go to number 15. This one scares the hell out of me. Capture one or both of the political parties in the United States. And I think we can all agree the Democrat Socialists of America today are the, well, the leaders of the Democrat party. They are the ones that most closely resemble, well, <laughs> the writings of Karl Marx among others. And these people are not just socialists, they may be on the road to full bone blown communism. Talk to me about that. Yeah, that's absolutely true, Barry. So, you know, back back in in the first part uh, of uh, this this uh, transformation um, of American uh, political life, you could say Moscow, the KGB, the Kremlin. Um, we're still dominant in terms of global communism and Marxism. And that's the ideology, certainly of Marx and Lenin, um, that, that dominated the scene politically and otherwise. But I would say that today, uh, world communism is, is really dominated by Beijing and the Chinese Communist Party. But nevertheless, its roots are in Marxism, Leninism, the Communist Manifesto. And we're looking, yes, at the Democrat Socialists of America, which dominates the Democrat Party uh, in the United States. And you know, here's the thing, if, if, if any of us would go back to last year, 2020, and look at the Unity Task Force recommendations, the official name of what's been come, uh, come to be called the Bernie Biden Manifesto, this is the 110 page document that laid out the premises, the, the, the positions, um, the, the, uh, the topics that the Democrat Party would focus on, lay that side by side then with the Democrat Party platform of 2020, a little bit shorter uh, document, and then have a look back at the Communist Manifesto of 1848 written by Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels. And there's not a hair's breadth of difference among these. And the things that I'm talking about are things like abolition of private property, uh, progressive um, uh, taxation, uh, uh, confiscatory taxation for the purpose of redistribution of wealth, centralization of the means of communication. These are all in the Communist Manifesto. And they're I, all in. I, I, I thought, Democrat I thought you were going to say, I thought you were going to say, Claire, and that's today's news. Let's go find the source. You gave me the source. And as you were saying it, I couldn't find any difference with the news of today. It's exactly what was predicted. Yeah, exactly. And remember, we're, we're, we're running down these points that were captured in this chapter 13 of The Naked Communist in a book published in 1958. Let's go to number 17. Oh my gosh, Claire Lopez. This is spot on. Number 17, get control of the schools. Use them as transmission belts for socialism and communist propaganda. Propaganda. Soften the curriculum. Get control of the teachers association. Put the party line in textbooks. Oh my, is this happening? Isn't it though? Uh, really, honestly, out of the entire list of 45 goals, I think perhaps this one, number 17, may be the most uh, important of all. Because what has happened? Um, the communists very deliberately and methodically took aim at our academic system in America way back 
shortly after the communist revolution in Russia in 1917. Uh, they used vehicles like the Frankfurt School to do that. Uh, Herbert Marcuse, uh, other leading educators, uh, that's air quotes there, um, who systematically did just what 17 here says, to insert communist propaganda, Marxist indoctrination into the curriculum, the textbooks. Um, and now we see it, it's not just all through America's public schools, K through 12 and universities, but private schools too, charter schools too. Not all of them, but too many of them. And we see in, in, in uh, uh, curricula that our foundational principles that undergird this, this country, Judeo-Christian principles, found in our foundational documents written by our founding fathers, uh, individual liberty, the equality of everyone before the rule of law, uh, government by consent of the governed, all of these things are not taught, never mind actual, factual, accurate history of the American founding by pioneers and settlers and the founding fathers. Instead, we have the New York Times 1619 project that premises that the United States is built on nothing but racism and slavery, uh, and that systemic racism persists to this day throughout our society. Um, you've got the critical race theory um, kinds of, of, of curriculum elements pervading public education, ethnic studies, all of these things are now uh, throughout, pervasive throughout America's educational system. And even though President Trump uh, set up the, or the uh, 1776 commission last year, um, and they produced a beautiful report called the 1776 uh, Commission Final Report, which came out this year, January 2021, as an outline, I think a beautiful outline, uh, for restoring accurate civics and history uh, education in our schools. Uh, it has not gotten the traction it needs, and instead, uh, all of this other uh, twisted uh, portrayal of America and American history is dominant right now. They've succeeded. Number 17, check mark next to that one. Boy, that's the truth. Thanks for coming on, Claire. Tell people where they can find out about you. Well, um, I have uh, a number of places where I publish videos and written pieces. Newsmax.com, for one, Citizens Commission on National Security, the United West, of course, uh, Brandon House's Worldview Weekend, and of course, at the American Truth Project. On social media, you can find me at Claire M. Lopez on Twitter. I'm on Parlay, I'm on Telegram, and on Facebook. Thanks so much for coming on. We sure Thank appreciate you. it. For all of you out there in ATP land that haven't yet, please subscribe to our text message system. You'll get all of our shows and publications like Claire Lopez on the cell phone in your hand, absolutely free. All you have to do is text the message truth and put the address at the top to the number 88202, push send, you'll be signed up. It's always free and you'll see all of our content every day just by looking down into the palm of your hand. For Claire Lopez, I'm Barry Newsbaum. Thanks for joining us on ATP Report.